नमस्कार टुडे विल स्टडी द इलेक्ट्रोफिजियोलॉजी ऑफ मायोकार्डियल फाइबर्स एंड व्हाट इज मायोकार्डियल फाइबर द सेल्स ऑफ हार्ट एंड इन हार्ट वी हैव द एट्रियम राइट एट्रियम लेफ्ट एट्रियम राइट वेंट्रिकल लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल देन वी हैव द पेसमेकर सेल्स एंड देयर इज एसए नोड एवी नोड बंडल ऑफ हिस द पर्किन जे फाइबर्स ओके so two types of myocardial fibers are there one in the atrium the ventricle and the purkinje ja fibers one type and sa node av node and bundle of his this is one type so two types of uh, uh, myocardial fibers are there one is non automatic fibers and the other is called automatic fibers automatic fibers uh, are present in sa node av node and bundle of his and uh, non automatic fibers are present in atria ventricle and purkinje ja fibers and why we call them automatic fibers because they generate impulse on their own okay whereas these non automatic fibers they cannot generate impulse on their own they depend on the uh, impulse coming from uh, these pacemaker cells okay mainly this sa node so Uh, th these non automatic fibers are also called as fast channel fibers because the conduction velocity is 0.5 to 5 meter per second in purkinje ja fibers it is 4 meter per second and the automatic fibers are called as slow channel fibers because the conduction velocity is only 0.01 to 0.1 meter per second okay then if you see the uh, the ions okay the there 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 are um, sodium ions sodium sodium um, is present outside uh, more so outside inside sodium uh, is present 142 uh, is to 10 ratio outside more potassium is major intracellular ion so uh, present more inside in the ratio 4 is to 140 then there is uh, calcium uh, in the ratio 5 is to uh, less than 1 okay and uh, sodium channel oh, when sodium channel opens sodium enters into the uh, uh, cell when potassium channel opens potassium will go outside when calcium channel opens calcium will go inside okay so what happens uh, uh, during the resting state during the resting state the major uh, ion is, is is your potassium in the in the Mm, in the uh, non automatic fibers which maintains this resting membrane potential and this resting membrane potential remains constant and you can see it uh, in the uh, using this nernst equation nernst equation uh, where uh, ex is equal to minus 61 log xi by xo so inside concentration of uh, potassium divided by outside concentration of potassium and we will get minus 94 millivolt so the resting membrane potential remains stable for uh, uh, non automatic fibers at minus 90 millivolt whereas the resting membrane potential uh, uh, does not remain stable in case of automatic fibers because because there is a gradual uh, depolarization during this uh, diastole so there is slow depolarization and this slow depolarization can be caused by sodium or calcium or both so there are leakage channels sodium and uh, calcium mainly in case of uh, your automatic uh, fibers and uh, non automatic fibers the major um, leakage channel is your potassium so the, the they, they they act as the diastolic currents and this potassium in non automatic fibers they uh, they maintain the resting membrane potential whereas uh, the sodium and and, and calcium in uh, automatic fibers they they cause this slow depolarization in the phase four this is phase four so there are a phase like phase 0 phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and phase 4 and uh, in this phase four the resting membrane potential remains constant in case of non automatic fibers whereas it uh, there is slow depolarization due to leakage of so sodium or calcium channels and uh, there is leakage of sodium or calcium or both and there is slow depolarization so the resting membrane potential when um, any impulse comes any impulse comes that will cause uh, all or non phenomena any impulse uh, either can depolarize 
or cannot depolarize. So any impulse which reach a membrane potential called threshold potential, which reaches the membrane potential, uh, one membrane potential, threshold potential, then once it reaches this threshold potential, that means there will be depolarization. Uh, if it cannot reach this threshold potential, there will be no depolarization. So any impulse which can cross, which can uh, change the resting membrane potential into the threshold potential uh, will become an action potential. So that there will be one depolarization followed by one repolarization. That means again the membrane potential uh, will be coming to the resting state. Okay, so this phase is called depolarization, this phase is called repolarization. So this, uh, this phase is depolarization, this is called repolarization. Again the resting membrane potential is achieved. So the, uh, the uh, threshold potential is minus 60 to minus 70 millivolt in case of fast action uh, potential non-automatic fibers and uh, this uh, for this automatic fibers the, rest, the threshold potential is minus 45 to minus 55 millivolt. Okay? So here uh, the, the um, once the impulse uh, um, is enough, strong enough, and uh, has the ability to become action potential, and it it can uh, shift the resting membrane potential to threshold potential. That means there will be depolarization. And why there will be depolarization? There will be opening of the sodium channel in case of non-automatic fibers, and uh, in case of automatic fibers. In, uh, in phase 0 there is calcium. So this is the difference between non-automatic and automatic fibers. In non-automatic fibers there is a sodium channel opening in phase 0. In automatic fibers there is opening of calcium channel. Then this uh, sodium channel uh, gets closed um, and this calcium channel gets, gets closed. So there will be uh, uh, fall, fall in this membrane potential that is called phase 1. Then we have uh, 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 calcium opening of calcium channel at the si at the same time there is opening of the potassium channel and because of uh, op um, uh, that there is a balance and we say we say that phase as the plateau stage the membrane potential remains uh, constant that is called plateau stage phase two and after that this these calcium channels close and there will be opening only potassium channels which will cause the repolarization and uh, that is our phase 3. Okay. Then phase 4, phase 4 in non automatic fibers potassium maintain this membrane potential whereas in uh, automatic fibers sodium or calcium or both they, uh, the leakage channels they, they cause uh, slow depolarization. And again for that uh, balance of all these ions there is also sodium potassium ATPase which uh, in by which um, uh, three sodium go outside in place of two potassium which come inside and uh, that means it uh, acts against the uh, concentration gradient so it is a pump sodium potassium ATPase then uh, that sodium uh, comes uh, into the into the cell uh, in exchange of calcium so that the, the, the ratio of sodium to calcium is 3 is to 1. So all, the, the, all these activities, sodium potassium ATPase, sodium calcium exchanger and all these diastolic currents, the leakage channels, uh, they all these occur in the phase 4. So phase 0, um, the difference is phase 0, uh, so sodium channel uh, in case of uh, non-pacemaker cells or non-automatic uh, uh, fibers and uh, um, phase 0 calcium in case of pacemaker cells or automatic fibers, then um, phase uh, uh, phase 4, the difference is phase 4 here only potassium and uh, in phase 4 here sodium or calcium. So in this way uh, um, um, the um, automatic uh, fibers and non-automatic fibers the, they, uh, they function. So in non-automatic fibers there is fast action potential, fast action potential whereas in automatic fibers there is slow action potential. Okay. So action potential is nothing but the impulse which, which has the ability to convert uh, this resting membrane potential into threshold potential. And the, if the impulse is uh, not strong enough to convert uh, minus 90 millivolt to say minus 70 
and they say minus 92 only minus 80 is this then that impulse does not have the ability to depolarize the muscle fiber okay so that if that cannot uh, reach the threshold potential that cannot be depolarization so this this phenomenon is called all or non phenomenon so either there will be depolarization or there will be no depolarization and if there will be depolarization then depolarization will be followed by repolarization so one depolarization and one repolarization combined together is uh, called action potential duration okay now, one depolarization and one repolarization so this uh, uh, so sodium channel this sodium channel uh, exists in th three states open state uh, then uh, refractory state or inactive state and finally the closed state or resting state so once the sodium channel opens uh, sodium enters and there will be depolarization and uh, mm, then it remains refractory for certain time and then it comes to the closed state so when it is in refractory state if any impulse comes whatever strong it may be it cannot again open the sodium channel but once it reaches the closed state or resting state if the impulse is strong enough then um, it can open so we call it as action potential okay and this uh, uh, the, this period during which the impulse cannot uh, uh, open the sodium channel okay that is called the refractory period so the period during which the muscle is refractory to any stimulus and this refractory period can be absolute refractory period or relative refractory period so in absolute refractory period uh, whatever strong the impulse may be it cannot uh, initiate another depolarization whereas in a relative refractory period if the impulse is strong enough then it may it may cause depolarization so the phase 1 and phase 2 are called as uh, absolute uh, refractory period uh, whereas the phase 3 and 4 are called as the relative refractory period so absolute refractory period relative refractory period that means during the relative refractory period if the impulse is strong enough then uh, from here also the another depolarization can be there so if the another depolarization will be there so the refractory period will not be same as in case of a normal one so the the minimum interval that is actually happening that is called effective refractory period so another term is used effective refractory period which means it is the minimum interval between two propagating action potentials okay so action potential duration is the period during which the events of depolarization and repolarization takes place so one depolarization and one repolarization so this time this period is called action potential duration and uh, refractory period until uh, another impulse can initiate so that will be your refractory period the period during which the muscle is refractory or insensitive to any stimulus okay so now uh, the effective refractory period in case of non automatic fibers is less than the action potential duration whereas in automatic fibers the effective refractory period is more than the action potential duration so erp to ap ratio is less than 1 in case of non automatic fibers and erp to ap ratio is greater than 1 in case of automatic fibers and why this occurs because the sodium channels recover in a voltage dependent manner above the threshold potential in case of non automatic fibers and here calcium channels are there uh, mainly in your phase zero calcium is there in place of sodium so in automatic fibers calcium channel is there which recover in a time dependent manner this is the difference sodium channels recover in a voltage dependent manner and calcium channels recover in a time dependent manner in progressively after repolarization so um, this is uh, all about the electrophysiology of uh, myocardial fibers thank you